Greetings, my name is Isa Bokarse. I am here today to share with our fellow citizens home and abroad um, some views and analysis in relation to a topic or a point of observation that has been on here and uh, home for a while and that is to say engaging the diaspora or Gambians in the diaspora for that matter with more listening skills and uh, lesser expectations from a whirlwind of unpreparedness will serve national interest more than a circus of blame games. Diasporans also must put in place a blueprint outlining their priorities before answering to random calls. Voting rights is the beginning of it. We must try our best to make sure that this is a change with difference and change we can believe in. Electoral reforms are what led to the death of Solo Sunday. And I can tell you that it's a spark that finally set everything ablaze, tickling many Gambians to understand that everything and anything that some of us were saying in terms of revelations or unearthing the filth of the former regime was actually not based on speculation or vendetta. I believe the recent pictures from mile two have once again vindicated some of us. Now, when we come back to the new era, diasporans should stand up and make it known that there must be ballot boxes in the diaspora. If not for these forthcoming elections, it should not take a long time for that to be introduced. The former regime used to say we don't have money, but we'll still turn around and ask diasporans not to talk about them. But we'll still turn around and invite those people to come home and invest. If the money is the issue, I have no doubt in my mind that the diaspora Gambians who came together on radio stations, videos and everything, raised a significant amount of money to lend a supporting hand to the political process that led to the ushering of Yajame out of the seat of power, would not hesitate to create those funds to make sure that ballot boxes are abroad. Also, the diasporans have people who are affected by immigration matters. It is not only those who are citizens or permanent residents whose case are to be seen as if you have papers abroad, if you are a citizen abroad, if you are a professional abroad, just come home. There are diasporans who have H-1 visas. There are some whose process of papers is on and it's not yet completed and they have every legal right to receive those papers here in, 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 in England and also in France and other places where they are. Some are even in Senegal. Some are not abroad because of asylum. Consulars should be reminded that especially those assigned with the responsibility of handling consular matters should be reminded that they have to be very active and they have to be very open and they have to be very patient. Tackling the issue of Gambians abroad, especially those affected by immigration matters, should not be based on parties and lines. If you support the party in power, we'll help you. If you belong to this tribe, we'll help you. If you belong to this set of group, if your father is rich and all that, no. 
that is another thing. And also, we should engage in a way that we are going to make sure that we respond to calls, but not calls at random. And also, I would advise the government to look into one issue here, which is curtailing the powers of certain consuls, honorary consuls, some of whom, of course, not under people like myself, because some of them we have history that they know that I don't take those things when I was an ambassador. But I understand and I know some ambassadors, I'm sorry to say, may not have the know-how or may appear before those consuls with inferiority complex. Those kind of honorary consuls who accessed their seats through corruption and network through the former NIA should also be fired and some of them contained. Because that is affecting Gambians abroad. Some Gambians don't even know that. Consuls have to stand up for Gambians. They have to leave their work because it's not free of charge. Some consuls make Gambians believe that I'm not paid a salary. Those consuls are not telling you the truth. They are not paid salaries. But why are they running after the position? Because they have consular cards and duty-free exempt cards. As business people, in fact, they are earning more than those being paid salaries. Now, the idea of people just saying, come home and work for your country is a misleading way of inviting people. Gambians in the diaspora have been engaged and they have sacrificed a lot. Working for the country begins with participating in bringing change and that is what the Gambians in the diaspora did. When working for one's country doesn't mean that you have to be in the country. There are Gambians in the diaspora who can work for the country. Look at the model in Ethiopia. Look at the model in Rwanda. Look at the model in neighboring Senegal. So, engaging the Gambians in the diaspora cannot begin with come. It should instead begin with hello. How are you doing today? It is so condescending for somebody just to stand up and say, come home and work for your country. Coming home to work for one's country is not a feeling that anybody subjectively keep in your heart and your mind. Loving one's country is not something to be judged by the person walking the streets of Banjul and Serekunda. No. So, we Gambians in the diaspora, too, as far as I'm here for now, I have to say we should also understand that being abroad and sending critics or criticisms for that matter with emotional approaches is not the answer. The answer is we have to know that home is home. In fact, nobody should be reminded of home, like the Ghanaian writer said it. Nobody will point at his father's left hand with the, well, sorry, with his father's hat with the left hand. So that is what I wanted to share with brothers and sisters for today. Thank you very much. My name is Isa Bokar